to apply it to our lives, to live by it, to honor it as you do, and, Lord, to share it with others in a discipleship way, teach it to others, read it to others, and to preach a holy gospel from it. Lord, I pray that you will rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts from your holy word going forward. For some reason, we're having a problem with YouTube, uh, which feeds some other sites, Gospel Light House of Prayer, uh, Gospel Light Society, and other uh, platforms. And so, Lord, uh, I pray that you'll help our technician to fix that permanently uh, or to go live with uh, Vimeo. And so, Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast the devil and the demons of hell out of this situation and from this place and that uh, your holy gospel and your holy word would go out freely uh, to all of the platforms that are set up. And we pray that people would hear the gospel and be saved, hear your holy word and be changed and encouraged to live for you and to keep on doing so in these perilous times. Lord God in heaven, we do pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts. Lord, from this time of reading your holy word, and uh, we pray that everything would, uh, the road would be paved for your holy gospel and your holy word on every platform around the world. Glorify your holy name, lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant me uh, everything that I need. To do what we need to do here today. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And uh, Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai, And uh, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt heartily with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou? 
and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, uh, Sarai. And uh, the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And uh, the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And uh, she called the name of the Lord uh, that spake unto her, Thou God seest me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore, the well was called Bela Haroi. Behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare. Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. Thank you for what you show us and teach us from your Holy Word every time we read it. And Lord, I do pray that you will grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit, your unction, and your anointing to understand your Holy Word. Hide it in our hearts. Help us to love it, to obey it. Help us to cherish your Holy Word. Help us to remember it and to meditate on it and to live by it, by your grace. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, and for his sake, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, this is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the Scripture and the Sense podcast, episode number 718. Let's take it over. Episode number 718, where I read the Word of God and give the sense of it based on an authoritative commentary source, uh, such as the Bible Knowledge Commentary uh, and or the Matthew Henry Commentary. This podcast is based on... This podcast is based upon Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8, 
where it says Ezra and the Levites read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. The aim, therefore, of this podcast is that through the simple reading of the Word of God, the Holy Bible, and the giving of the sense of it, the church would be revived and the world would be awakened. Awakened and saved from the wrath of God and uh, saved from the burning hell by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ who said the most loving and the most wonderful words ever spoken to mankind in the history of the world when he said in John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, have you ever taken up Jesus Christ on those words? Have you ever believed in Christ for the salvation of your soul do you have peace that if you were to die today you would go to heaven or are you not sure or you do believe that you will go to hell if you want to be saved from hell and saved from the power of sin and a life of misery and you want to be saved so that when you die, you would go to heaven. There are some things you need to understand. First, accept the fact, dear friend, that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I hope you understand that you are a sinner just like everybody else. By the way, the Pope is a sinner. The Dalai Lama is a sinner. Joel Osteen is a sinner. Whoever is your spiritual hero, they're sinners too. And if they're honest, they would admit that. Uh, Some of the sins that we have committed and do commit are lying perjury, being dishonest, stealing, purloining, stealing paper clips from the job, stealing somebody's food or dessert from the refrigerator, stealing candy from the candy store, lust in our hearts, for people and things, covetousness, coveting what other people have, which leads to theft and lying. It needs to be couched in the Gospel of Society and Gospel of House of Prayer. Thing. Another sin is disobeying parents and dishonoring parents, having attitude towards parents, disrespecting parents. Have you ever done that? Sure you have. Taking God's name in vain, using God's name with curse words, using God's name to cover your lies, 
And that's just five of God's Ten Commandments that you have violated and that I have violated. You say, well, preacher, I have not done them all. Well, would you admit you did one of them? Yes. Okay, then, well, the Bible says if you break one of God's commandments, you break them all. So that has been established. We are all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means we're in trouble. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. And for sin, always in life. The Holy Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die because of sin, our sinful nature and sinful choices. Our bodies one day in if not saved by Jesus Christ, will go to the eternal, burning, tormenting hell. And that's a fact. In fact, Jesus Christ, the meek and lowly, loving one, preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. He preached more on hell hell than he did about heaven. Hell is a very real place, my dear friends. He described hell one time as a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. At another place, he described hell as a place where their worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. Hell is a very real place. Third, he preached a uh, third, I want you to understand you need to accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Just as you are. You've already sinned enough. You're on the road to hell. In the back, turn around. In the back, turn around completely. You're on the road to hell. You don't have to sin anymore. You've already sinned. You would have died today. Please understand, within one second, in one second of your death, you will open your eyes up in the torments of the burning hell. To show you how serious a matter this uh, that hell is, Jesus Christ, in one of his many sermons on hell, said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. That's how serious the matter of hell is. You'll be better off going to heaven with an amputated hand and an amputated foot than with both hands and both feet going to hell. In the words of Jesus Christ. You can scoff this off and laugh this off all you want to and joke and say you and your friends are going to party in hell. There won't be any partying in hell. You won't even be able to see each other. Hell is an awful place. Hell is a real place and hell is bad news. 
but I have some good news for you. Yes, straight from the lips of the same Jesus Christ who warned the entire world very thoroughly that if we don't believe in him, we will spend eternity in the burning hell, a place of torment. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, these loving and most wonderful words to mankind in the history of the world. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All you have to do is follow the instructions of Jesus Christ to be saved. Jesus made it very simple. Yes, Jesus made it very easy for you and me to get saved. Notice his instructions. For God so loved the world. First off, he's letting you know that God is the one behind this salvation. God loves you. So much he sent and gave up. For you and me. His very son, his only big God and Jesus Christ died. humiliating cross <clears throat> pardon me Jesus Christ died on a cruel humiliating cross for you and for me. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. No funeral arrangements were made for him. No life insurance policies came to bear to pay for his uh, burial and funeral. Here he is, the Son of God, God in the flesh. Now you understand, if you're the Son of God, you're God in the flesh. That's why his other name is Emmanuel, God with us. They didn't give him the burial they gave Joseph. Jacob Sarah Abraham no funeral no long procession which of course he deserved they had to hastily some secret agent Christians had to hastily bury him in a borrowed grave. But as somebody said, it was a temporary grave, so it, it didn't matter. Because he rose from the dead on the third day for you and for me to set us free. Do you want to be free this morning, dear friend? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot tell you anything else from all of my vast knowledge and college education and 
graduate school and all of that. I cannot tell you anything else that will set you free other than believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are free indeed. I cannot offer you a greater life than believing in the crucified one, Jesus Christ, and then following him. Yes, you will have tribulation. Yes, you will have trouble. Yes, you will have enemies in your family and outside of your family. You will have people to hate you for no reason. You'll have friends to turn away from you. Yes, you'll have some problems on this road following Christ, this narrow road, contrary to the lying prophets and the lying preachers. You may never be prosperous. You may never be rich. You may never drive a Bentley or a Mercedes or anything like that. I'm not going to lie to you and promise you that. But you will have peace that passeth all understanding and joy unspeakable. So believe in him today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Notice what Jesus says here, that whosoever, the word whosoever means anybody at any time. Red, yellow, black, or white, we're all precious in God's sight. And then he said, believeth. The word believeth means to trust in, to have faith in. Who? Him, Jesus Christ. Not the preacher, not the deacon, not the pope, not the priest. The only somebody you ought to believe in is Jesus Christ. And you will not perish. That is, you will not die and go to hell. But Jesus said, but have everlasting life. So, dear friend, just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> it is as simple as that. You don't have to be in a church. You don't have to be in a confessional at a church. You don't have to be a member of a church to be to get saved. You don't have to give any money to the church. You don't have to get baptized uh, to get saved. You don't have to give any money to, to the church to get saved. You don't have to do a whole lot of good works to get saved. Just simply believe in Jesus Christ, our perfect Lord and Savior, the sacrificial Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. He has paid your sin debt that you owe God. He has paid my sin debt. And, and all God wants us to do is believe in him. Now that's love for you. And if you're willing to believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm willing to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer. Please repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart, believing in your heart in none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Holy Father God, I acknowledge and I admit that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your commandments and your laws. 
some of them mentioned earlier by the preacher. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose on the third day, Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul today. From the hell that I deserve to the heaven I don't deserve. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins. And help me to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the new life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you believed in your heart, in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, he bled, and he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you, Congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Write this date down so that you can remember it. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please email that to us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to resume the standing between the living and the dead service already in progress with the scripture and the sense. Today we are reading Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 18. Holy Father God, help us to understand your holy word. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, your special unction, and your special anointing to read and to understand your holy word and help all of us to realize under the sound of my voice and who and the people who will be under the sound of my voice when all of this goes on demand. Lord, help us all to understand that we will die just like everybody else. And so, Lord, help us to make sure that we are saved and born again. Help us to examine ourselves if we need to, to see whether or not we are uh, in the faith. And uh, help us to understand that those of us who are saved and in the faith, we are going to die and leave this earth one day. And uh, that we need to learn your holy word. We need to obey it and live by it. And have it to crush our proud and arrogant and selfish hearts. Break us, make us, and mold us. Break, a, break our hard and proud and stubborn hearts uh, into peace. And Lord, be thorough with us and break us, make us, and mold us to be what you would have us to be. Help us to do what we know we should do, whether we feel like it or not, based upon your holy word by the power of your grace and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Save those who are lost and revive those who are saved. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Verse 18. 
yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I just read in your hearing Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 18. Now here is the sense of it from the Bible Knowledge Commentary. It reads, Habakkuk did not state that he would merely endure in the hour of distress. He said he would rejoice in the Lord and be joyful. God is the inexhaustible source and infinite supply of joy. God, my Savior, is literally the God of my salvation. Far too many people keep trying to buy joy, but happiness is not found in circumstances. Joy is not found in money and material things and circumstances. Joy is available to everyone, even to those stripped of every material or financial possession. For joy is to be found in a person. Jesus Christ, God Almighty. It comes through an intimate and personal relationship with the Lord so that even those in the worst circumstances can smile and be at peace, be content, and be joyful. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. And that is one of the blessings of your holy word, even in a book like Habakkuk. We can find something like this to remind us and to tell us that pursuing worldly things like money and fame and material things will never make us happy, will never make us joyful, will never make us at peace. Only you. So, Lord, we thank you for that reminder today. Help us to remember it. Help us to hide your holy word in our hearts. Help us to meditate on it. And help us to remember nobody and nothing, no money, no material things, will ever give us that unmistakable uh, smile of joy and peace. Only you. Only you. And only you. And we, we, of course, need to be right with you as your children. We must confess our sins and repent to make sure that the slate is clean so that we can have that joy continuously in our hearts and spirits and lives and even on our faces without even trying. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus This is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International with the White House family devotional reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's morning and evening book. This is the podcast. And this is episode number Uh, Dr. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, chose for our devotional reading today, 2 Timothy 
chapter 1, verse 9, which reads, Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Uh, Spurgeon continues, the apostle uses the perfect tense and says, who hath saved us? Believers in Jesus Christ are saved. They are not looked upon as persons who are in a hopeful state and may ultimately be saved, but they are already saved. Salvation is not a blessing. Salvation is not a blessing. I hear you need to take take that off right there. Completely. Salvation is not a blessing to be enjoyed upon the dying bed and to be sung of in a future state above, but a matter to be obtained, received, promised, and enjoyed right now. The Christian is perfectly saved in God's purpose. God has ordained him unto salvation, and that purpose is complete in Jesus Jesus Christ. He is saved also as to the price which has been paid for him. It is finished, was the cry of the Savior, ere he died. The believer is also perfectly saved in his covenant head, for as he fell in Adam, so he lives in Christ. This complete salvation is accompanied by a holy calling. Those whom the Savior saved upon the cross are in due time effectually called by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, unto holiness. They leave their sins. They endeavor uh, to be like Christ. They choose holiness not out of any compulsion, but from the stress of a new nature, which leads them to rejoice in holiness just as naturally as aforetime they delighted in unholiness and sin. God neither chose them nor called them because they were holy, but he called them that they might be holy, and holiness is the beauty produced by his workmanship in them through Christ Jesus. The excellencies which we see in a believer are as much the work of God as the atonement itself. Thus is brought out very sweetly the fullness of the grace of God. Salvation must be of grace because the Lord is the author of it. And what motive but grace could move him to save the guilty. Salvation must be of grace because the Lord works in such a manner that our righteousness is forever excluded. Such is the believer's privilege. A present salvation, such is the evidence that he is called to it. A holy life. Shall we pray? 
Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for salvation full and free in all. In the words of your servants, uh, Charles Spurgeon, all of grace. Uh, it is all of your grace. And it is not of us. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. For in fact, Lord, it is your grace that would make us say with our own mouths that we have nothing to do with it. That um, it is indeed all of your grace and not of us. And we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. And we thank you for the grace that...